Hi everybody, Adam with Fanuc here. We're going to do a tutorial today uh, for basic RoboGuide uh, setup uh, for new users. Going to cruise through this one. Um, Fanuc does offer RoboGuide training courses, so I uh, recommend that you look us up online or give us a call, 888-FANUC-US, uh, to get some of that training. But uh, if, if you've downloaded a free trial or, or maybe you've been tinkering a little bit, uh, this tutorial will get you through the basics. So I've started building a cell, um, a basic handling pro cell. Uh, I've named it Tutorial Fun. I'm starting it from scratch. Uh, as of today, there are some newer software versions, but I'm running on version 9.1. And uh, so right here, we get to pick our robot. Any, any one of Fanex robots, uh, pick your favorite. Um, I'm just going to roll with uh, one of our number one best sellers of all time is the R2000 uh, 165F. Big, big automotive uh, supply robot. So uh, we'll jump into that guy. Um, this page, this little screen here is uh, if you wanted to add any um, auxiliary servos, uh, things like that. We're not doing that for this tutorial. Here's one thing right off the bat that makes RoboGuide really nice is any option you can dream up, you can test in RoboGuide. Everything you see right here is, is options that you can buy. Um, you know, palletizing software, password protection. Um, I actually do want the motion package. That's, that's a great tool. Menu utility. I'll probably be doing a video about that later. Um, anything you ever want to test or try or play with, vision, um, all of this kind of stuff, you can actually test it in RoboGuide, see how you like it, and do a try before you buy. So that's one benefit of the software. For now, I'm going to keep it pretty bare bones. It's just the robot with the motion package. Uh, so as we look at it on the summary page, you'll see right here, the only robot options that I have on it are the the FANUC Robotic Association parameters, which is stock, and the motion package. So nothing too fancy here. This is going to be bare bones. So let's go ahead and uh, let this build itself. So what's neat about RoboGuide, while this is loading, I'll tell you, um, the, the, the RoboGuide software uses the exact same software that's on your robot. We, we did not reverse engineer or parallel engineer or change anything. Um, it's got all the same uh, kinetic algorithms for the motion. It's got all the same, obviously, options. Um, so what's nice is what you see in RoboGuide is what you get in reality, right down to the thousandth of a second of cycle time. Um, we know the, the servo heat that will be generated based upon ambient temperature. We know the, the load. We know reducer life. All of that right within RoboGuide. So th this is not just some fun little 3D cartoon. Um, this is actually a very powerful tool that has a lot of different subsets. Maybe some topics for other videos uh, coming along for... Um, optimizing robot position within your cell, um, setting up conveyors and indexers and uh, all that fun stuff. So just know that there's a lot more to RoboGuide than what you're about to see in this video. Uh, but hey, here we are. So I have a robot in 3D space. Um, just at a glance, um, we've got our work cell tree over here. Uh, where we can add all kinds of uh, different goodies. We can look at programs that we're writing. We can look at the robot tooling and frames. Um, so for, our, for, the, for the intents and purpose of this video, we are just going to focus on fixtures, parts, and programs. That's it. All this other stuff we'll save for another time, but we're going to write a program, we're going to use some fixtures and we're going to use some parts. Uh, and at the end of this video, you'll know how to make a nice simulation. Um, some hot keys at a glance. Uh, this little jog tool with the little hand, you can click on that and it exposes each axis of the robot. So I can, uh, 
grab this robot and move the wrist around, uh, you know, move J3 around. Uh, so it's just a quick little way to move the robot using your, your joint by joint tool. I can turn that off. I can also select this little ball, which is the default TCP of the robot. And I can drag him around in world coordinates, X and Z and, and Y. So I can move the robot like this. Um, I can also move the robot within the work cell and move it around to all different locations. Uh, I can tilt it. I can just put it wherever I want in space. Uh, for right now, I'm going to double click the robot to pull up its properties. And I'm going to put him back at all zeros because there's no reason to be going crazy right now. But lesson one, you can move the robot around. <clears throat> okay. So let me, uh, let me use my little jog tool, get this robot back into a not so ominous position. Okay, perfect, wonderful. So when you're setting up a simulation, uh, there's, there's a few pieces that you need to understand and what they are. The first thing we're gonna do is um, let's, let's give the robot some tooling. So I'm gonna expand this I'm going to double click the tooling that pulls up this pop up screen. Um, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll name this one gripper. That'll be fine. We need some kind of CAD data uh, to tell us uh, what, what this tool is. If I click this button for file, it allows me to, to go through um, and and look you know on my desktop or in my folders or, or things like that uh, to find CAD that I've drawn. So if I drew the CAD model for the end of arm tooling gripper, I use that button. But FANUC also has this button, which opens up a FANUC library. In this library, we have all kinds of parts, obstacles, fixtures, and of course, end of arm tools. Uh, we have chamfering devices, uh, this little opener thing, pointers, presses, cutters, grippers, just about anything that, that would you know, servo to it, it. It goes on and on and on. But, but really, uh, there's this full library to help you mock up your tooling. I'm going to start with just some standard grippers. Uh, I'm going to just take, uh, take this guy right here and hit apply. When I hit apply, I'm going to see a big set of servo grippers on this robot. That's a big tool. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the physical characteristics of my tool. All right, whoever drew this obviously drew it for a much larger robot. Uh, so I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. I'm going to say I want everything to be half that size. Apply. That looks a little more realistic. Next is how it's affixed to the robot. That doesn't look right. All I'm going to do is grab this little handle and rotate it, and it'll actually snap to a nice, uh, you'll see in the location, negative 90. So that's actually pretty darn good. It's, uh, it's normal to the face of the robot. Got that set up. How much does it weigh? Who cares for right now? 25 kilograms. Sounds good. So now we've got the size, the position, and the mass of this tooling on the robot. I want to lock those values. When I do, you see this goes red. So now uh, I can no longer mess around with that, with that tool. That's how I want it. The next thing I want to do is I want to define my user tool, uh, also known as tool center point, TCP. Uh, this one will be pretty easy because I can just click and drag and kind of put it somewhere down in space. Uh, I'll say use current location. Maybe I'll clean that up, say 465, a nice even number. Perfect. So now this robot knows where its tool center point is, um, which is valuable because the robot can dance around that point. You see that? Uh, I, can, I can rotate around that point in space. Um, and, uh, and of course, continue to, to jog. So, so now we've got a nice tool on the robot. We're going to cruise right along here. Fixtures. 
what is a fixture and what is a part? In RoboGuide world, before you can start programming, you have to tell the robot, what are things that I can and cannot grab and carry? And what are things that I can and cannot pick up from or set onto? Um, when I talk about fixtures and parts, uh, I, I, I grew up in the era of Nintendo 64, the N64 days, 007. I used to run around 007 and try and blow everything up, and I was often disappointed about what I could and could not shoot. Well, it's because engineers had to define what can and cannot blow up or, or move. Um, well, guess what? You're that engineer now. So when we decide what can be carried, something that can be carried will be a part. Something that a part sits on will be a fixture. So let's start simple. Let's add a fixture. Again, uh, I could make either just a box, a sphere, a cylinder, container, things like that. Um, I can upload my own CAD files if I had this drawn. If I had my work cell done up in SolidWorks, I could bring it in here. But I'm going to, again, use the FANUC CAD library because there's just so much in here. Um, conveyors and 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 just all kinds of stands and pallets and all kinds of fun stuff to build your work cell. Let's start with a conveyor. So it's going to drop it in. Uh, whenever you drop something into RoboGuide, it always puts it at coordinates 00, 0 3000, 3 meters up. Uh, that's just so that it's up in space and kind of out of the way uh, so you can find it. So let's go like this, top view. Here's my quick view changes over here so I can click around. Let's, uh, let's move this thing over a little bit. Let's maybe rotate it 90 degrees so that we have like a little in-feed rack going. Um, we'll bring it down to the ground here. Look at that, looking good. Um, and let's just put this within the work envelope of the robot. If you're ever wondering, can I reach something or is it in the work envelope? There is this button. You turn that on and it'll tell you what the robot can and cannot reach. Uh, the the pink, pinkish reddish representation is the faceplate of the robot. And the blue representation is factoring in the tool. So now I can see how far that tool can reach. I'll turn that off. The other thing I can do is I can, on my keyboard, I'm pressing Control and Shift at the same time. When I press Control and Shift, the robot will follow my mouse anywhere I go. So if I tell the mouse to go there, the, the robot goes, goes there right away. So this looks good. Um, this tells me that, yep, I, I can reach a part when it's on my conveyor. Perfect. So if I double click on this conveyor, Let's name it infeed, apply. I'm not really going to worry about the scale factors or the location right now. For this tutorial, it looks good. Um, if I turn on this checkbox for show robot collisions, um, it'll actually highlight and, and blink different colors if the robot bumps into it to let, to let you know you've simulated a crash. So that's kind of neat. Uh, another story for another time. So we'll probably have a part coming in on an in feed. That also means I need an out feed. So let me add another fixture. Let's just grab a table, for example. Okay, again, it throws it up at that uh, 3000 mark. So let's go ahead and bring it back down into a workable location. Something like this. We're going to do a very simple pick and place for this tutorial. Control, shift, mouse click. Yep, the robot can get there. Perfect. So, uh, and let's name that table. Let's name it the outfeed table. Apply. Okay. So we now have, uh, let's get this robot out of the way a little bit. I'm going to click on my little handles. Move it over here. Okay, so now we have an in-feed fixture, an out-feed fixture. These are things that parts can be picked and placed from. Uh, now we need some parts. 
So let's take a look. Let's add a part. Let's see what's in our library. Um, we've got cars. We've got miscellaneous shapes. We've got different work pieces, all different fun stuff to, to play with. Um, I want to move a car. Why not? Uh, everyone thinks of robots and cars, so we're going to have fun with a car. So when I click on car and insert it, you see in the tree that a new car has been added. It's a coupe. I'm going to name it model car. And I'm also going to make it much, much smaller than this, right? This is a real size car. You know, it looks like the robot could drive this thing. Um, let's do something like a tenth of this scale. Make it a model size car. Look at that. So now we have a smaller car. That'll be much more useful. Um, and how much does it weigh? 10 kilograms is fine. Now, when you bring in parts, by default, they go onto what we call a part rack. You see this is called a part rack. All this is is a, a visual representation so that you can see your part. Because right now, we're not even using the, 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 the model car anywhere. Um, so RoboGuide just gives you a place to look at it. Um, you can play with the colors. You know, let's, let's make it a, uh, you know, something Elvis would love, a nice, nice pink, uh, pink Cadillac or something. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to, to play with the part over here on this rack. But really, once you've set your scale factors, your names, your colors, things like that, I don't need this rack anymore. So I'm just going to make it invisible because all it is is a nuisance. Uh, it was, it's great to start with, but it's a nuisance. I need this robot to know where the car is coming in, where it needs to go, and it, as well as how I'm going to carry it. So let's double click on our conveyor again, our in-feed conveyor. You'll see there's a tab in the middle called parts. Well, let's get intuitive here. If I click model car and hit apply, now I have a model car uh, on my um, in-feed conveyor. Perfect. So now that I have uh, this model car on here, I can even define how it comes in. So I can say edit the car's offset. I click that checkbox and I can say where it's coming in on the table. You know, maybe it comes in uh, nose first, um, position it, sure, something like that. Wonderful. I'll hit apply. Looking through a couple of these options, uh, there's a few things that are, are worth understanding right here. Is the car visible at teach time? And also, is it visible at runtime? Teach time is right now. It's while I am programming this system. Can you see the car? Yes or no. If I, if it's, I, if I don't want to see it right now, I can hide it. And now it's gone. Bring it back. There it is. Visible at runtime means when I hit this play button to play our simulation, do I want the car already visible? Well, in this case, since it's an in-feed, yeah, I do want it visible at runtime. We'll, we'll talk more about it on the out-feed in a minute. But uh, on the out-feed, I don't want a car visible because my plan is to pick it up from here and set it here. Let's look at the other uh, tabs, the simulation tab. This model car, do I want it to be picked up or do I want it to be placed or do I want it to be both? Well, because this is an in-feed conveyor, the only thing I will probably do with this is pick it up. I don't need to set it back down onto the conveyor for this simulation, so I'll uncheck that. I'm not going to place that car on the conveyor. I'm only going to pick it from the conveyor. Then there's this create delay. Uh, create delay means once you have picked up a part from the conveyor, how many seconds until a new one appears? You know, So if I put in a value of 4, for example... Uh, then that means after I pick up this car and move away, four seconds later, there will be a new car. That way I can keep looping the same simulation over and over and over. Let's move on a little bit. Let's hit apply. Let's go to our outfeed. Parts tab. Need to add a model car. Apply. Very good. Let's edit the part offset. I want it to be something different. We'll go like that. Go like this, 
go like this. Perfect. So um, there we are. We'll pick it up from there. We'll rotate it and set it there. Uh, visible at runtime? No, I don't want you visible at runtime because I don't want that car to already be there when I hit play. I, I want this table to be empty. I'll set it onto the table. Let's look at my simulation tab, the model car for the outfeed table. I don't plan on picking it up from the table, but I do plan on placing it on the table. And then once I set it down, how long until it disappears? Uh, just pick a number. It doesn't really matter. If you leave it at 99999, uh, then it just doesn't really destroy. Hit apply. Perfect. We're building the ingredients of this work cell. Um, we've got our in feed, our out feed, how the part comes in, where the part goes out. Now we need to teach the robot how to carry it. So if I double click the tool, guess what? There is a parts tab, model car, apply. You see how this is getting very redundant. All right, obviously we've got a problem here. We've got to fix this. So edit the parts offset. Uh, let's flip this guy around. There we go, get him upside down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position him into the grippers uh, until it makes, makes somewhat sense. Uh, something like... Something like that. Not bad. Now, I'm going to hit apply. Um, I am actually going to tangent off. I'll get a little more detailed in this video than I originally planned. Let's go into our simulation tab. You can actually upload uh, two different files for your CAD models. So if you wanted to draw a gripper that's open as well as a gripper that's closed, uh, you can do that. So I'm actually going to go back into my um, gripper settings. Let's see. Uh, choose that guy, which should be a little fatter. Let's see if that's a little wider opening for me. There we go. So that'll. I'm going to call this my open gripper. So now it says, well, what CAD model do you want for when the gripper's closed? Well, I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to choose... A skinnier one. You see how this one's a little more open, this one's a little skinnier, that one's super skinny. Um, but let me use this one, apply. So now I can toggle open, close, open, close, open, close. Um, I see that the car doesn't perfectly fit in there. If, if we want to get super fancy, um, maybe we can change the uh, scale factor, whoops, the scale factor of the car and uh, Make it fit in there a little bit better. Maybe point one two. We can do some guess and check here. Parts, edit. We'll make it look semi-realistic. There we go. Look at that. Apply. So now when I go to my simulation tab, open. There's no part. Close. You see the the gripper closes and has a part. That just helps make things look a lot more realistic when we're when we're doing our um, programming. So now the robot knows this, it knows how to carry a part. We have all of the ingredients we need to write some code. Um, we can also put in some delays for attach and detach. Um, that's, that's not as critical here, but let's, uh, let's write a program. Um, I'm always a fan of writing the program in the teach pendant. Um, because it can be used uh, later. Uh, you can take this code and, uh, and upload it to your real robot. Let's give this robot uh, some payload information. Um, I remember, I think we did 10, 10 kg for the car and 25 for the, for the tool, so we'll just call it 35 kg. If I'm wrong, it's no big deal. Robot will let me know. One. Um, before I dive into the robot motion, um, well, no, let's do the motion first. It'll be easier this way, and I think you'll agree. So I'm going to create a program called Pick and Place. Edit. Very good. Uh, if you like the icon editor, that's great. Uh, I've been doing this for too long, and this actually just confuses me, so I go old school. 
Um, all right, so I like to always put in a handful of lines of code uh, just so I have a bunch of blanks to work with. Uh, I always like working in a double screen uh, so that I can see some position registers over here. We know that we will have a home position, a pick position, a place position. And then me, I like to have um, an approach and a retreat offset. Um, I'll just call it Z offset. Uh, give me maybe 150 millimeters. So what uh, and what I'll use that for is just how high above the part do I approach before I go down to the part. So let's uh, let's set up my offset. Nothing in X, nothing in Y, 150 in Z. Perfect. Done. Robots home position. I'd say that looks like a great home position. Shift record. Now we have to teach the pick and the place. A few different ways to do this. Uh, one, you could just jog the robot with these keys. Two, you can click here and, and try to jog the robot over. Or let's just use the fact that RoboGuide is pretty awesome. If I open up the conveyor uh, tab, or uh, properties box, go to parts, there's an option right here for move to. Just click that. Boom. It puts the robot right where it needs to be to get that part just by clicking move to model car on the in feed. So now I go here and just say, all right, that's my pick place. Record. Now I need my drop location, so I'll click on the table, move to, and just that quick robot goes right there so shift record you can see how much easier and quicker it is to uh, write your programs in RoboGuide and then put them in your real robot later all right uh, we're gonna put in uh, some of my favorite lines of code um, you know you frame uh, I don't I didn't teach any frames for this so it's zero um, my tool user tool number we're using tool number one make sure our payload data is accurate we're running payload one and uh, my general override we'll keep it moderately slow for now so those are my favorite four lines of code that you should always start with uh, let's write some some more fun let's start off the show at our home position so we'll start at home very good and next let's make a linear move one thing i'm going to do i'm going to edit these definitions um i want my moves to be uh notably uh faster than this let's call it 1500 and 1500 with a cnt value of 25 those are my favorites at least for this robot so let's go linear continuous to PR number two, that's my pick. Um, but I want to go above the pick. Okay, so I want to say choice offset PR four. So uh, if you don't know how to use offsets, uh, let me know. We can talk about it. But basically, I'm going to be 150 millimeters above the pick position as per this line of code. So now we'll take that, uh, do a little copy select copy and I like to do a paste skip skip paste and you'll see how this starts coming together okay so you see that I'm using PR2 throughout all three of these lines of code I want to start just above it then I want to move down to the pick position with a fine and then I want to move back above it again um, and in the middle uh, you know, we'll have a little delay and then right here is where I'm going to tell it to pick it up. Hang tight. That's coming. Coming in the next next part of this video. So stay with me. So after we pick it up, guess what we got to do? We got to set it down. So let's select this code, copy it, come down here, paste it, and just say now we're going to the place position, place position, place position. Look at that. Life is easy. Uh, the last thing we should probably do is once the work is done, we tell it to go right back home. Choice, 
overhaul. There's a pick and place program, ready to rock and roll. This thing's ready to ready to go, quick and simple. So the only parts we're lacking is how do we actually acquire the part and then drop the part? Well, I'm glad you asked, or at least I asked on your behalf. In our programs, I'm going to right click and say add a simulation. I'm going to name this pickup and I get this nice little pop-up box. In my instructions tab, uh, you can see there's all kinds of simulation things I can do, but one of them is pick up a part. This is, is reminds me of the game of Clue. Uh, it, 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 what is it from where with who? Like Colonel Mustard in the library with a wrench. Uh, I want to pick up the model car from the infeed with the robot gripper that's at U-Tool 1. It actually filled that in for me because we went through the effort at the beginning saying what the robot can and can't carry. But if I had dozens of parts with dozens of locations, you'd have some more choices in this dropdown. But I want to pick up the model car from the infeed with the gripper. That's a simulation program. There it is. Pick up. It's done. Let's make another one. Let's name it place. I'm going to say drop. Fanet calls it a drop simulation. What do I want to do? I want to drop the model car from those grippers onto the outfeed table. There it is. I've got the pickup and the place. Done. Now we just need to put those back into our code, which was the pick and place code. So right here, when I'm picking up the part, instructions, call. I need to call a program. I want to call pickup. And then down here, instructions, call, I need to call a program, I'm going to call the place. There it is. Now we just get to test it. We get to make sure that everything works and see if we made any mistakes. Uh, be interesting to see. Uh, but here we go. We just hit this little play button and see how it goes. There we go, guys. There's our uh, very first successful simulation. Uh, actually, everything went really smooth, uh, so that was fun. Yay. Uh, you see the robot starts at its home position with no part, uh, goes and grabs the, uh, grabs the car. You see the actuation from the CAD, rotates it over, sets it down. One thing you noticed when I ran it again is about halfway through, uh, you know, about four seconds in, the new car appeared. Let's run that again. Actuates the CAD, poof, new car appears, sets that one down. So that's pretty cool. Um, being that the, the cars uh, show up and, and uh, would ultimately disappear, that gives us the ability to actually come in here if we want and, and, and make it repeat. So I could go up here and do some uh, for loops. So I could say for register one goes from one to two, and then at the end here, instructions, and four. So now it's gonna loop this whole program twice. Uh, we should be able to see this robot pick in place two times. Here we go. Grabs it, new one appears, sets it down. The old one, destroy delay, grab the new one, Set it down. So now you can see how, how that works and how you can run your simulations. Um, the final neat thing worth noting is uh, that displays it on your screen. If you click the record button, uh, it'll actually record and generate a video for you. Um, well, of course, autosave goes. There we go. Uh, it'll, it'll record a video for you. So let me uh, do an example here. Let's just make that a one. Let's make this fast. Okay, uh, if we hit record, it's going to play like it normally does, but it's also taking a video. Uh, and we'll, we'll show you how that works and, and how you can use that here in just a second. Let's let it take the video. Things are looking good. Wonderful. Okay, so now it's giving me a pop-up. You see right here, hey, we made an AVI. The AVI is located in your documents, um, in your AVIs, where it is. Uh, quick way to get there, 
Let me close this. The quickest way to get there is just tools and then the folder you're in. Tutorial fun folder, AVIs, and now you have a, a AVI right here. So you can pop this open and uh, and take a video there. So now, now you have an AVI that you can share with your customers. Um, you know, you can watermark it when it plays. Uh, do a full screen here. There we go. Um, hard to see on, on, on a screen within a screen, but actually in the lower left, there's a cycle timer down there showing you the cycle time. A couple other neat things. You can come, come down here. You can look at all the work, um, the profile work. If I look at the properties, uh, it'll tell me that uh, our cycle time is at 5.6 seconds. So that's pretty good. Um, this is our run panel that uh, gives the, uh, the ability to uh, collect all kinds of other info on this robot. I think I'll probably save some of this for a... Uh, for a test uh, for or for a video on another time, but there's your uh, there's your beginner's guide uh, to Robo Guide pick and place simple moving apart back and forth and um, enjoy. Uh, if if you got any questions, let me know in the comments. Feel free to call Fanic at eight 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 Fanic US and have fun coding.